Well, hello there, and welcome to Meeting Expectations. I'm Pete LaFrance, the old growler. If this is your first time here, what we do is we take a look at a can or a bottle of beer. Sometimes a spirit will drop by, uh, the drinkable kind, and we read the label, pretty straightforward, and we see what the brewer or the brewery is trying to sell us, or in the case of a spirit the distillery. We crack it open and we see if it meets expectations. Many of the tastings do things their own way. Well, <clears throat> I've got a little bit of a different format around here. First of all, we have the same style of glass for all beers, no matter whether they're a lager or an ale. Uh, we have the same style of glass for all of our tastings. In that way, no beer has an edge up when it comes to getting to the clarity or the aromatics. Speaking of aromatics, most tastings, it's see, sniff, sip, and speak. I see, then sip, then sniff, and speak. Why? Sometimes the nose can fake out the uh, taste buds and have them looking for something that really might not be there. I'll let Fred Dex, Master Sommelier, explain it all to you. He does it a lot better. Finally, number three, all beers should be served at the correct temperature. Once again, there's a link right up there to tell you what temperature your beer should be served at. But most of the ales fermented at a higher temperature are served at a relatively higher temperature, 50 degrees Fahrenheit to 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Lagers fermented at a lower temperature are best served at a lower temperature. We're talking upper 30s to maybe 45 degrees Fahrenheit. That way you get the best of the beer. Always, if, the, uh, if you have an nail, you want to get more aromatics. At the right temperature, you will get that. All right, what do we have today? For those of you who have been here before, you know what to expect. And for those of you who have just got here, do me a favor, click on the subscribe button and the bell. That way you won't miss any of our presentations. And give a comment about this one in particular. What brought you here? I'd appreciate hearing that. All right. For those of you who have been here before, let's get started. Okay, today from the Whetstone Beer Company up in Brattleboro, Vermont. Now it's just at the border. In fact, I'll have a, I'll have a link right uh, below. Uh, you can go to a website, to my website, uh, The Old Growler. You can, I'm pretty sure there's a picture there that, uh, in fact, I might include it in this video. A picture of me standing on the border between uh, New Hampshire and Vermont in the bar. So, that's how close it is and it is a brew pub and they've just begun as i understand it probably from the pandemic started canning their beers and i am forever grateful because a week ago i was up there and able to pick up a couple of all of the beers that they had available so you're going to be seeing a lot of the what, stone beer company in the next few weeks all right let's get started this one is called the big stoner it is a hazy double IPA from the Whetstone Beer Company and they say with all the late edition hops and intense dry hopping our juicy Vermont double IPA is a big balanced and delicious the big brother of our flagship Whetstoner Big Stoner packs a punch at 7.8 percent alcohol by volume government warning Surgeon General don't Drink this if you're pregnant, and don't consume this if you are operating machinery, and I'm not doing either one. I'm not planning on either one. All right, this is straightforward, a hazy double IPA, and it is at, as they say here, oh, they, they, they'll explain even more, hazy, hoppy, juicy, sweet, and bright, and 7.8% alcohol by volume. I'm looking at a, a nice big bodied uh, IPA, uh, I imagine the, the, the hops will, um, if they're not local, I'd be very surprised, but uh, that is what I'm expecting from these guys. Okay, let's crack it open and let's see if it meets expectations. All right. Yes, sir, it's one of those hazy New England beers. And it throws some nice foam on the top, almost orange in color. That's nice. That's a very grainy color. I like that color. 
and lots of carbonation. You can see a lot of carbonation coming off off of that. That is that looks like an IPA. All right. Let's see if it tastes like an IPA. Cheers. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let's make sure it's at the right temperature though. I don't want to miss any of these flavors. Fifty-three, 53 degrees Fahrenheit, that is the perfect temp. Let's take a nose dive. Oh yeah. There is some, some dark berry hop flavor in there. And yes, that's true. Hops can sometimes give a berry flavor. A ra a ra blackberry and raspberry in particular. But this one, this has got a berry flavor to it. One more. And also, and it's very difficult to describe it, but the word is fresh. It has a very fresh uh, aromatic that it's, it's giving off. And it, it's just very pleasant in, in that way. Now let's see if there's any of the flavor of uh, hop flavors that match the aromatic flavors. Let's see if they can get together. Wow. I say wow because the malt, the malt is there. There's a, there's a sweet base to this, and, but it's not sweet. It is a grainy, um, a, a roasted, bready, um, well, it's more of along of uh, breadstick, that type of a breadstick uh, flavor in, but riding on top of it and just pretty heavy is a, a it's it, there's a, a the hop flavors are there's sharp and citric and when i say citric uh, again I'm, I'm going into lemons here and uh, just just one more to, to make sure yeah there's a nice bright sparkle to this which both the uh, carbon dioxide and the hop together give it a very nice it, it ends up a lot sharper um then i wouldn't say than you expect but it is an india pale ale and in fact it is a double india pale ale so in that case that double sharpness coming uh, coming out of it is is absolutely spot on so does big stoner heavy double ipa from the whetstone brewery up in brattleboro vermont meet expectations? It certainly does. I'm Pete LaFrance, the Old Growler, hoping all of your beers meet expectations. Ah.